It's Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day. Happy Labor Day, everyone. It's a Monday in Vista, California on this fifth day of September. And we're about 10 days into a heat wave, um, which is just, just right on the heels of my installing this brand new baby garden. And as you know, those of you that follow closely, uh, Greg and I and Alex and Bentley uh, just moved our home from the uh, south part of San Diego County to the north part of San Diego County. And the weather here is very comparable to East Chula Vista where we've come from, but still it has been hot and most of you in the land of milk and honey are understanding and experiencing tremendous heat as well. Many of you um, hotter than than us here in Vista for sure. Temps have been in the high 80s, low to mid 90s pretty much every day for the last 10 days and are predicted or forecasted to continue to be at those levels for another full week. So dilemma, I've told you how important it is to shade your succulents as best as you can to avoid watering uh, in lieu of trying to bring the temperature down on your plants because when they get really hot and stressed, they tend to go dormant and they are then unable to intake the water that you want to give them and they rot. Succulents can survive long, intense periods of drought far more successfully than they can withstand wet, boggy feet and rotten crowns and roots. So that being said, I thought I would go through the garden plant by plant with you guys and explain what I see, what I know about these plants, and if any water may be indicated at all. Um, I thought this might help because, you know, at some point, I mean, some of these plants I can give a little relief to, but I'm, I'm telling you guys don't water because it's best to err on the side of caution. But if you know what you're doing and you know your plants, sometimes you can get away with it. Uh, so let's just take a look and see. I've got a bucket of water here in the event that I see anything that I feel safe to give a little hydration to. Let's start with the Milii Crown of Thorns. This one, as you can see, is a mixed bag. It's, you know, these leaves are upright and looking pretty lively. The blooms are starting to fade, but that's normal. It's got some new flowers on it here, which is encouraging because that tells me that the plant is still active. But look at how desiccated these leaves are, how they're all curled, you know, and a little bit collapsed. So for me to water this plant right now, it feels very ill advised because the plant is in deep stress. This is indicative of that, and I'm, I'm very fearful that if I water on here, I am going to rot it. So I'm going to let that one ride. And if that plant were super special to me, I would put a little umbrella or some shade cloth over it to lower the temperature. Uh, remember, once the temperatures are, you know, we're out of the danger zone and temperatures fall back into the lower 80s and 70s, you can water the way you normally would again. The um, Petalanthus macrocarpus. This isn't showing any signs of stress whatsoever. I am not even tempted to water it because it doesn't need it. Look, it's upright. It's not burnt. It's blooming. It's even throwing off some new growth right here and seems to pre be providing shade to the little Vera Higgins underneath it, which also looks very good, very lively. Um, doesn't isn't showing any signs of stress whatsoever wouldn't even consider watering that up here same with this little crassula look happy 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 little plant little sunburnt right here but otherwise looks fine no need to water that same with my mangave I believe this is my lavender lady looks absolutely fine not even tempted uh, the antipurpurium looks great, not even tempted. I've got a little stressed aloe here that is always in the protection of the shade of this rock. Also looks absolutely fine. I like the red coloring, not gonna touch it. Moving on, here is another mangave. 
also looking fantastically fantastic. Don't doesn't need a dang thing. This little grouping of barrel cactus uh, absolutely will not touch. Um, and then just moving our way back around the circle here. Same with these these little little packies and sedums look really really tight. Here's one under here look at that I had rot this is classic rot see how all of the leaves fell off the plant not good all the leaves fell off and I have I'm left now with this desiccated little stem um, there's still some leaves up here holding on but this is what rot looks like and if you overwater your plants now or you water the wrong plants in a week or two, this is what you are going to find. And it's so interesting that it's, it's little siblings here are absolutely fine, but this one took a hit. So that's, that's what rot looks like. My agaves are totally fine. Cactus, totally fine. Um, over here, the cotyledon, um, long fingers, fine, fine blue atolls, everything here. This, this is the little, let's see if I can, the idea is to get this Athona capensis to spill over, but Athona capensis is so tough and will tolerate so much drought and actually turns really, really purple when super stressed. So I, I could probably give this one a little water because it is actively growing right now, but I don't want to because I don't need to. Uh, I'd like to see this get more purple. This little Echeveria harmsii is super happy. Everything here, my aloe, ferox. Um, a couple of you, Tony, you're one, have sent me pictures of your mammillarias that are all brown and asking me, is this plant dead? The answer is yes. Um, I have had the misfortune of killing a few mammillaria in my day by watering them when I shouldn't. Um, they're very sensitive to uh, water at the wrong time. Look at these little flowers that are coming on this cactus. Uh, so this thing is not dormant. However, it's also a cactus and it's full of water. So there's absolutely no need to put anything on that. This little euphorbia here in the pot. If you've got potted plants, these um, will, might tolerate water better than plants in the ground because you most likely have better drainage in potted situations. Uh, but again, if the plant isn't showing any evidence of needing anything, then don't bother. The Pacopodium from the Foster Garden in Chula Vista is absolutely dormant to the point where it might even be in a coma. And I don't even know at this point if it's alive. Time will tell. If it's alive, it'll give me some green growth up at the very top. In the meantime, the worst thing that I could do is put water on that plant. Yeah, all of these crassolas are doing fine. I have been providing shade with umbrellas. Uh, I've been moving it around all day, every day, to try to hit as many of the plants as I possibly can. Um, and it seems to be working. My precious Aeonium Sunburst Crest, this has been the recipient of a lot of umbrellas. Uh, I haven't put a drop of water on this, and I will not because this is a summer dormant plant. And I will absolutely not risk killing it with water, so I will continue to shade this as needed. Here's another milii that looks pretty rough. Look at that. Super stressed. Why? You know, I did water the plants 10 days ago. You know, it's possible that the plant is responding to that. Maybe the soil is still wet down in there. Um, I don't know. Uh, all I know is it's not happy. And the worst thing that I could do right now is add, add fuel to the fire. No water for you. All right, moving on, moving on, moving on. Here's that crassula that I bonsied. It's really stressed and not necessarily in the best way. This is an Argentia sunset. Uh, and when it's healthy and happy, this plant turns really yellow with red tips. Uh, it's not 
yellow. Um, the soil, and this of course is raised up. I have it, um, I have it basically anchored with this broken pot. So it is above ground. It's got a thick layer of rock on top of it. Yeah, there is not a drop of moisture in that soil. So I am, with this crassula, I'm going to use my discretion and I'm going to give it just a little bit. Now that's, that was not enough to kill it, but if it will receive that water, I'll know it because in a couple of days, the leaves will be perkier. They won't be so, uh, so stressed and so wilted uh, and it will perk right on up. The Echeverias, this really surprises me that these are doing so well. They typically don't like this type of weather. This is really great. I think it's because, again, I have provided a lot of shade here. Even the Similii, see how much better this one looks? See how perky those leaves are? That is the gold standard. The uh, Mangaves, looking great. Trigona, looks fantastic. Yep, 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 everything looks good in through here. My beautiful, beautiful variegated attenuata opened up a new leaf. You can see a little bit of sunburn right there, but she's got to acclimate to this new environment. And I expect she's going to look a little scrubby for a while, but she is hanging in there and I'm really, really proud of her. Everything here looks good. Here is a crassula that is, has um, got its red and yellow coloring going on. It's just happier, perkier. The leaves aren't as shriveled. It looks fine. Don't need to do a thing there. My Pacopodium lamarii crest looks terrific. It's not dropping any leaves. Looks perky. Gonna leave that alone. This cactus in the Susan Ock pot, I suspect is dead. <laughs> I might have killed this one. I mean, it's, there's just nothing to, it's just so hollow feeling. I mean, there's no weight. Uh, there's no, there's no roots really. I think that this is definitely a goner. So I'm gonna need a new little cactus for this pot. Um, this Fred Ives crest is harsh. This is a really, really hot corner in this garden and it is harsh and it is also getting radiant heat from these dark lava rocks. Hang in there, friend. Um, it's okay though. I mean, the leaves are really small. Um, the bottom leaves are kind of brown, but ultimately it is hanging in. So I'm gonna leave this be. These Augavoides look great. Um, my snow, my Euphorbia snowflake, Polygala or Polygona is just giving me life. This is perfection. This came from a fairly shady part over by Bentley's toilet in Chula Vista, acclimated like a boss. I mean, it's just, it's just looking great. My clam shell. Okay. My clam. Now this is tricky. My clam is tricky because there is no drainage in the shell whatsoever, but it's also very, very shallow. There's not a whole tremendous amount of soil in here. It dries out super quick. You can see these little sedums are burnt. Ooh, look at that one. Yikes. That may or may not recover. Look at the leaves are just falling off. I'm barely touching them and they're falling off. No bueno, but this little Cynthia Giddy, this little Aloe Dorothea, look at how happy it is. Even the Tillandsias are hanging in there in this one. Another little Agavoides, some more Athona Capensis. This is really, really dry. Um, starting to turn colors for me. This is unfortunate. This little Echeveria, look at all that sunburn. But, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to put any water on this because I just don't, uh, I don't see the point. Um, here's a plant that looks really, really rotten. Look at this. Look at that. 
just toast. This is, I mean, it's all brown. This was green. Um, look at look at all the rot from the bottom all the way up the top. All brown. This is this is toast. So this is I'm going to have to entrust to the garden gods and um, you know provide what shade I can and then maybe just plug in some fresh little cute plants once the heat wave is over but no we're not watering that because i don't want to cause more rot my agave perii looks fantastic here is a very very hot spot in the garden this is my euphorbia um, with the with the mermaid tail this was over in bentley's toilet in chula vista this was really really pouting hardcore uh, when I transplanted it. I hasn't seen a drop of water in, in the whole 10 days. And look up here at the new flowers coming there and the new flowers coming there. So this plant is coming out of it. It looks perky. Um, just don't see any need uh, to water it. You know, it's not showing me that it needs it at all. The, the leaves aren't wilty. They're a little bit, a little, you know, maybe not as, as perky as, as they are in the winter time, but the plant is clearly happy and thriving. I'm gonna let it ride. This also sad how burnt and fried this little sedum is. Um, this looks bad, this looks bad, but look at the tomentosa, perfection. The Echeveria harmsii here, this one looks pretty stressed out. Um, this little aloe looks fantastic. This cotyledon hanging in there. This little agave, um, this is a plant that you absolutely do not want to water in dormancy. It will rot. So it is also tough and just hanging tough, hanging in there. I'm not going to water that. I'm not going to water that little cactus. So here we go. It's after three o'clock and this side of the garden gets shaded after three. So I'm expecting and I'm not disappointed. The plants in here all look really good because, oh gosh, it's like 10 degrees cooler over here. But you can see this variegated milii that came from Chula Vista looks fantastic. The cotyledons, the mangaves, even the, the, the sativaria milii. This one looks okay. Crassulas look great. Um, yeah, everything looks good over here. This is the arrangement that was in the rusty toolbox that was in the lemon tree pot, and I just popped it into the ground. This Echeveria is not happy, but it's surviving, isn't it? Everything is okay. Look at that. Looking okay. So just let it ride. Have I put water? Oh, just on that jade, huh? A little bit. Okay, over here. Okay, rubertinctum. This little sedum rubertinctum is very, very, very unhappy. Oh my gosh, you're so sad. And look at it, it's throwing off all kinds of air roots. It's looking desperately for moisture. Um, sedum looks fantastic. Cotyledon looks good. These guys look great. So I, this is another one. I'm gonna apply just a skosh of water because in my experience, the rubertinctums can take it. And since all the other plants look great right in through here, but notice just a little bit. And this is also up on a mound with a good two inches of creva on top. So fantastic drainage. This coin plant right here, I don't know. I mean, this was basically more or less a cutting when I put it in and it is struggling. It's not dead yet, but you can see that it's clearly clearly struggling so I need to just trust this one also to the garden gods not try to water a plant that's clearly really struggling just to survive just leave it be and hope that it gets enough shade over here in the afternoon that it'll survive this rubertinctum looks much better than the one I just put a little water on doesn't it so I'm gonna leave that alone Here's a little stacking cactus, like the one over in the Susan Ock pot that's dead, that's clearly alive. It's, you can see all the green, looks very vibrant. Uh, in this little arrangement right here of sedums, 
looks absolutely fine. My Euphorbia Posanii is loving life. I had cut this branch right here um, about a week ago because it was just a branch with no leaves on it. And look at how it has branched out from beneath my cut. I've now got one, two, three, four new plantlets forming beneath that cut. Lots of activity around the base. I think this is really, really happy. I wasn't sure if it would be okay in all this heat, but it clearly is loving life. Another plant, it's in a pot. It's probably bone dry, but clearly happy and relying on its own resources. I'm not gonna bother it at all. Also, I have noticed a lot of aphids on my blooms, like on my Echeveria blooms. So I'm just cutting them off at this point because the mother plant is struggling to provide for herself, let alone the blooms. Um, in other times of the year, I would, I would treat those blooms with a neem oil or insecticidal soap uh, because the hummers and the bees, they love the blooms. But this is, you know, we're in DEFCON 9 here with the heat. I don't want to stress the plants out any more than necessary. So if I see a plant with a bloom with black aphids all over it, I'm just going to cut off that bloom call it a day. I'm not going to try to treat it. Okay, and then the little pot rock that I planted with the Kelly Griffin aloes, rubertinctums, and sedums. I thought I might water that because it's basically just sitting in moss, but you know what? It's fine. No need. I'm not going to water that. The Plicatillus, do not water your Plicatillus right now um, in the summertime. It's absolutely fine. Our mangave is fine, trigonas are fine, everything over here is fine. This, oh, here we go. Looky here, guys. All right, so here we have, I just, I can't even believe how good this is all doing. It's so hot. But here's an Echeveria that is throwing off copious blooms, um, but she looks really happy, really healthy. She's open. I see no evidence of insects on her blooms. Let it ride. All of these sedums are happy. The little Petalanthus macrocarpus, look at that, getting ready to set flower. And this crassle is not burnt. Butthole cactus is looking great. My little blue elf, my little aloe. Yeah, tight, tight, tight. Everything's good. Totally normal on the underside. If you have some spent blooms, that's normal. Don't even worry about it. Oh, God, it's so great. Oh, yes, and then my chair, another one, very, very shallow rooted because um, there's not a lot of soil in here. This does get afternoon shade, so I am going to treat this chair to a little drink. I don't see anything in here that is rotted. I don't see anything in here that looks like it's on its way out or struggling too desperately. I think this is just healthy and would really, really appreciate a little support. So I will give just a little drink, just a little to my chair. A uh, lot that, you know, I had just reworked this chair. So these are all fresh plantings too. Um, look at even this, this is amazing. This Aluaudia procera that is in this pot with all these holes in it. Deborah Lee Baldwin gave me this pot. Um, so dry. And yet the blooms. And that's another indicator to me that water isn't necessary because clearly there is enough moisture happening at night and in the morning. When I get up at six o'clock to walk Bentley the succulent dog, it is just, the air is heavy. It is so there's so much moisture in the air, it's so humid. And so these plants, and you'll see, you know, are you seeing water on your furniture and on your umbrellas? Um, they're taking advantage of that too. Um, so I, that's an indicator to me that moisture is happening, that the plants are receiving something that might be sufficient. So that's all, that's it folks. Well, wait, no it isn't. We still have a little more garden over here. Okay, my spiralis, uh, remember this had turned yellow and I put some um, worm castings on it and it greened right up and it started to, to grow, but it's doing kind of a weird thing here. It's not spiraling 
the right way. I don't know what is happening with this, but see, it has this really tight spiral until it doesn't. It's kind of funny. We'll see what happens. There's another milli eye in the back that looks really stressed out. I could lose them all. I don't know. We'll see, but I know better than to water it. Um, this pot. Remember we talked about, you know, your pots, you might be able to get away with giving them a little support if you really think they need it. So here we have a cotyledon that's looking really water stressed. See, these leaves are all, look kind of like your skin after you get out of the water, you know, it's all pilled. These plants, if this were getting too much water, these would be rotted, just like the little one that I showed you over on the other side. I've got the little string of pearls, crassula. Got a little milii back there. Yeah, nothing's showing any signs of rot or extreme sunburn. The pot looks healthy, generally speaking. So to support that little cotyledon, I'll give this one just, just a little bit too. Okay, and then down below, everything's hunky-dory. I've been watering my lemon tree and my grapefruit tree every three or four days. Um, don't need to water this. I have already taken care of it. And then the plants over here around the grapefruit, you know, nothing. Oh, this looks a little rough here, look. Yeah, see, this is the kind of stress. These plants are just almost beyond See all that damage right in the, at the center of this plant? That is not good. All of this burn all over this. this. This rotted, look at that, it cracked off. What a hot mess. Yeah, watering, this is just beyond. This is so stressed and struggling so much. Also radiant heat from this pot, I think is probably attributed to that. It would be really mean of me to water this little grouping right here that's already just struggling to survive. Um, back here, everything looks good. The blue atolls are doing really, really well. And all the crassulas, the sedums got a little fried, but looking okay. Just get some dappled shade in the afternoon. Um, then of course the cactus garden over here, I wouldn't dream of watering. And even this, um, this potatorum, this agave here looks fantastic. I, it doesn't, it's dry as a bone, trust. It's hot, 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 but it's great. It looks good, looks good. This mammillaria, that's not good. That's not good and that's not good, but that tells me that there's some rot that may have set in on this plant. Damn it. I'll just have to wait out this heat wave and then we'll just see what happens on that. And then the Petalanthus bracteatus cuttings that I popped in here last week. Um, I imagine that these will all lose all these leaves and flowers and just be sticks until they uh, root. But, you know, whatever. We're just going to pretend that's not there right now. Uh, it will be great. Okay, and now we're back to propeller plant, Crassula falcata, blooming, looking cute. This is tight. Looks good. Looks good. We had a windstorm the other night and those pine trees from the golf course. Look at what I have picked up. With the help of the grands, we got all that out of the yard. So, you know, I hope, I hope I haven't confused you. I was just trying to give you a little insight as to, as to my process, you know. It's so important that you become experts on your own garden and on your own plants and learn, um, become instinctual about knowing what your plants need. And, and that's kind of what I was doing and I was trying to articulate for you as I went. And if that confused you even more, I apologize. I hope it did and I hope it helped. Uh, please feel free to leave comments if you have additional questions or if I have just muddied the water, no pun intended, um, or if you have any insights or tricks or trades or, or things to look for or uh, ways that, that help you know uh, what to do for your precious plants, please let us know in the comments too. This is a great community. Thank you so much for subscribing. 
for liking, for sharing, for joining. This has been Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day. Bye guys.